Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise. And we are sitting here close to the middle of July and just at the trade deadline. Now, last episode, I thought I was at the trade deadline, but they actually have a phase that's the trade deadline prep. I thought that was the trade deadline, but we're going to act like it was and not make any more trades. Now, I am getting excited getting towards the end of season one because now I am getting a clearer picture of who's going to be sticking around and who's really going to have to go. This is probably going to be a way tougher than what I thought because I'm going to have to make some decisions that I would hate to make, like trading some A potential guys and keeping around some C potential guys and some B potential guys that may have a lower ceiling than A guys, but I might have to keep them around because they're more productive. And looking at kind of just pitching goes, you know, Pat Neshek, I maybe should have dealt him. Maybe I shouldn't have, but he's 39 years old. I mean, at least he's doing well for us now. Maybe just honoring his contract might be better for us. And then Brian Abreu is one of those guys that I'm talking about, one of those A potential guys. I know he's just 64 overall and only 22 years old. The problem is, is that he is actually one of our highest rated relief pitchers in our organization at least that are in the 20s. So I had really no choice but to have him at the MLB level. I could have just tanked, but I'm not a tanker. I don't like to tank. So I just wanted to stay competitive, use our best guys, no matter what their potential was or what their uh, you know overall guy. If they were the best guys in our organization, we were going to play them. But I did want to kind of go the slow route with Corey Lee because he was a high you know, he's a high 70s guy, A potential, and he is the best prospect in baseball. So I obviously wanted to go slow with him, and he got hurt. So it kind of halted his MLB status for the time being. But now I see our top 50 guys. We actually have Forrest Whitley, who's added to that top 50 list as far as prospects in MLB, then in the MILB pipeline. And now let's just hop into some action. Like I said, some A potential guys that I was talking about getting rid of and guys that I might even have to give up on. Jose Accurdy might be one of those guys. Here he is pitching in a jam. Up 1-0, a liner to left field. And that is going to get past Kyle Tucker. Another one of those guys that I'm talking about. The guys who we thought were going to be the cornerstones. And look at them. I mean, they're just not doing well at all. I mean, look at this. That's an easy catch in left field, and somehow Kyle Tucker misses it. But Akurdy does settle down a little bit and does get the next man to strike out for his seventh K of the game. And that brings up Steven Piscotti, who's hitting in the two hole, and he hits one hard to left, left field to Kyle Tucker. He comes up throwing to third, but now they score two here. In the eighth, we had a one-run lead, and that brings up Marcus Simeon, the shortstop who hits a liner to left field, and Tucker gets another ball hit to him, and another run comes in, making it three to one. And let's see if Akurdy can settle down, and he does get Matt Olson to swing at the inside slider breaking in. And now we move on to the bottom of the ninth inning. This is the first time we'll actually see Matt Duffy up to bat for the Kings, and he will strike out swinging. And now that brings up Scooter Jeanette with two outs, 0 for 3 in this game, and he swings at one way out of the zone. And the Curdy gets the loss. And man, I just don't know about some of these guys. I mean, Jose Curdy is not doing well at all this year. I mean, this was probably his best game pitching, to be honest. Eight innings pitch, three runs given up. And I just don't know, man. I just don't know about these eight potential guys we have on our roster right now. We might just have to trade away a lot of them to get some good talent. I mean, we just do not have talent right now at all in our organization. A couple of guys. But now we hop into a situation. Clint Frazier has two home runs in this game. He gets a pitch on the inside part, and he almost makes it three. So come on, let's win this game. Here's Clint Frazier now in a one-two count. He's going to watch an outside changeup, and now it's two to two. He gets a pitch over the middle, and he makes the pitcher pay his third home run of the game. And Clint Frazier, if there's one guy that has been probably the best move we've had so far here in this franchise, it's been Clint Frazier. We acquired him when he was 69 overall, 
He is 74 now, 75 actually. He goes four for four in this game, three home runs. He's hovering around 290, so he is hitting very, very well. So now we advance past the actual trade deadline. Matt Olson, who we just saw strike out to a Curdy in that past game, he gets traded for Jose Barrios. Wow, what a move. But the bigger move, Moncada gets traded to the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, I'm kind of upset at this trade because I did not think that he would be available, but the Rays, they traded him away like it was nothing. I don't know if this is something in MLB The Show, but I remember last year in the show, Moncada was traded like five times in my franchise with the Mariners. I don't know what it was, but maybe he's just an available guy. I don't know how they figure that into the logic there, but he is traded to the Rays, so the Rays get kind of a future cornerstone in the infield. So just looking at the trade log here for the trade deadline, I'm not going to go over each one specifically, but I see that Trey Mancini went to the Yankees, so that's a big move for them. So now Corey Lee finally returning back from injury after that two to three month injury he had, he will return to double A. I will not rush him up. He is the number one prospect in baseball and he is 21 years old. And then Matt Duffy, look at this. In that last game, he actually got hurt a fractured forearm two to three months. He won't even play at all for us less than five games. He will be a free agent in next next year's free agency in the offseason. So that sucks. I mean, we traded for him. Hopefully, I mean, we were hoping that he would be kind of a depth guy. But we won't even get to play with him. But we do make a couple of moves here. We move, decide to move Gray Kissinger down and move Park up because Park is hitting over 300 at the AA level and Kissinger is hitting 235 at AAA and Park is rated higher than Kissinger right now. So it just makes too much sense. I'm gonna move Kissinger down to AA, get him some work there. Hopefully he will get better. But we do advance the day and take a look what happens. Corey Lee returns from injury and immediately the next game gets hurt a dislocated shoulder wow i mean you can't make this up i mean he literally is the number one prospect in baseball he came back and in his first game gets hurt dislocated shoulder i'm shelving him for the season i'm not risking any more injury i don't know if this actually affects his durability rating it's at 68 it looks like it looks like it went up plus two i don't know if it's went down or not i don't even remember what it was in the beginning but i'm not going to risk it he's out for the year and then to add to that matt duffy obviously is hurt as well so that kind of sucks. We don't even get to see Corey Lee. I had plans to actually bring him up to AAA and see what he could do in a few games and then move him up to the MLB level. I mean, he's 78 overall. I think he's ready to play at the MLB level. So now we move into a critical situation versus the Mariners. We've been losing a ton of games here in the end of June, moving into August. And look at us here in another jam versus the AL West second worst team, the Seattle Mariners. So now here we are in the ninth inning, Schreiber on the mound, gonna face Patrick Wisdom in the eighth hole. And this is an easy decision here. We're just gonna walk him and load up the bases, setting up the double play ball. And up comes Kyle Lewis, who was probably one of their top prospects in baseball. Now he's at the MLB level. And now two for three in this game, 2-0 count, one out. He's gonna hit one deep, and that one is gonna be deep enough to score the runner from third. And the Mariners, who are a bottom-feeding team right now as well, they are rebuilding. They come away with the win, so we can't even win versus one of the worst teams in the MLB right now, and we get the loss. We only get seven hits in that one to their 12, and that's been a big issue. Our pitching has given up so many hits, so many runs. I mean, we just cannot produce anything on offense at all. And to add to that, we go into the month of August winning are losing actually a ton of games that is 17 straight losses heading into this game versus the seattle mariners we are sitting here at 43 and 82 i gotta break this streak so we actually are gonna play this game we are facing eric swanson a three and ten pitcher rogelio armenteros is one of those guys i think i'm going to build around in the future 
I actually have a clear mind on who I want to keep around. And I think that Armenteros has a chance to possibly be our ace in the future. He is 11 and nine on the year. Doesn't have a great whip. It's actually below average to be honest, but he's getting wins. And honestly, what matters at the end of the day? Is it the stats or is it the wins? It's the wins, I think, in my opinion. Yes, you have to put up good stats, but I, I value that. I mean, he can win when he's on the mound. Our team is better. I don't know what it is, but we're winning. He's the only pitcher that we have with a winning record. So now we hop into this action facing Eric Swanson. He is three and ten, like I said, a one three two whip, which is slightly below average. I mean, I think it's I might be right on par with being average. I don't know. So here comes Kyle Tucker up to the plate. One of those guys I highlighted earlier with the A potential hitting 232, though. Maybe he's just having a bad year. He grounds out here to start out this game. Now up comes Clint Frazier, who I have fallen in love with as a hitter. He hits one up the middle, and that is going to be a single for him. He has thrived since being moved up to that two spot. I've actually experimented with him at the three spot as well. So here comes Melky Cabrera at the plate, our lone all-star this year. He gets walked, and that brings up David Bodie, hitting 253. I mean, not great, but not bad at all because I know, I mean, he it's his first year with us. I'm going to give him a break since we did trade for him, and he has had moments where he's been clutch in moments. So now that brings up Scooter Jeanette here, hitting in the five hole. He hits one up the middle. Let's see if he can sneak through, and it won't. Fielded by D. Gordon, and that is the third out of the inning. As now we move on to the bottom of the second. Here is another acquisition for us. Hitting in the sixth hole, that's Mike Ford, who's got power. And he does hit that one down the right field line. And it is foul. And he comes up to the plate once again. 3-2 count and goes the other way. He is hitting close to 200. He has been unimpressive. At first he was, but now it seems like he's come back down to earth. And that's going to bring up Garrett Stubbs, the catcher, who hits one hard up the middle, and that one is going to be a single as he's got 70 speed. He uses the wheels, and that brings up Kyle Tucker back to the top of the lineup. He is 0 for 1 in this game, and he watches one on the inside part of the plate. That is a called strike, and now we move on to the third inning as we can't get any runs in that inning. Here's Patrick Wisdom at the plate. He goes the opposite field, and that's going to reach all the way to the warning track and hit off the wall. And that is going to be a double here for the Seattle Mariners to start out this third inning. So now they got a man on second, second base this time with Malik Smith at the plate. He hits a blooper to left field, and that one is going to drop in. And Kyle Tucker is not going to go home with that one. He is going to give up that run. Armenteros, it's one to nothing. And Malik Smith with the RBI single. This inning does continue here with Matt Mitch Hanniger at the plate. But look at Malik Smith. He is going to swipe second on that one. So now two and one count. Look at him. He's swiping third. And he steals second, seals third. And Mitch Hanniger at the plate. All he has to do is put this ball in play. And on a three and two count, he will swing and miss. So Armenteros does get the swinging strike three on that one. And that's going to bring up Daniel Vogel back in the four hole. And he does get out of the inning. There we go. That's what I like to see out of Armenteros. Honestly, like just seeing moments like that gets me excited. And now we move on to the bottom half of this inning. David Bodie at the plate, who's hitting around 250. He gets a pitch right over the middle, and he won't miss that one. It's going to be a home run. And like I said, I am not giving up on David Bodie. We did trade for him. He has a really good contract as well. It's a cheap five-year deal that we have him signed to and he's making about maybe one to two million a year and for the next four years I think we got him signed up after this season so let's move on to the fourth inning here's Armenteros giving up a hit to start out this inning and now they got a man on first base with one out JP Crawford at the plate let's see what Armenteros can do he does get him to ground out and that is going to be a double play David Bodie at short I'm looking forward to moving him back to his natural position, which is third. Hopefully, I can pick up a shortstop in the offseason, or even Pena can move up as he performs well in the minors. So let's move on to the bottom of the fourth. Here is Leonis Martin at the plate, and he will hit one off of the wall in right field. This is going to be the official stadium next year, the Metrodome. I did start out with the Texas Stadium, 
Uh, and here comes the Malik, or not Malik Smith, There, here comes Tim Beckham at the plate, and he hits one to left field, and that one is going to be a hit to the left side. And now we got runners on the corners here with Garrett Stubbs at the plate, the catcher. He's one for one in this game. He hits one down the left field line, and that one will drop in fair play as we will advance the runner to third base, and that is going to be a safe runner at third. And that's an RBI single that time for Garrett Stubbs. And that one will force the Mariners to go to the bull, bullpen and bring in Taylor Gilbo out of the bullpen. And that's going to bring up Kyle Tucker, who is 0 for 2, make it 0 for 3. He swings that one way out of the zone, maybe a little anxious on that one. And that brings up Clint Frazier, who does have a single in this game. He watches one low and outside. And now the bases are loaded with Melky Cabrera at the plate. Let's see what he can do. He gets a pitch over the middle, and he smokes one up the middle, and that is going to score two. Garrett Stubbs has 70 speed. He scores easily from second, and there we go. Four to one here as we try to break this losing streak. Nice hit up the middle by Melky. I really like what Melky does. I mean, he's not going to have put up the great numbers, but he's not going to be bad either, and that's going to bring up David Bodie with two outs. He grounds out, but at least we get three in that inning. As we move on to the seventh inning now, Austin Nola at the plate. Armenteros is around 100 pitches. He gets the line out too low at first base. And here brings up Patrick Wisdom in the nine hole. And there we go, another strikeout. And now we move on to the bottom half of the seventh inning. And Scooter Jeanette leads us off. Carl Edwards Jr. is on the mound now. He hits one hard up the middle. And Scooter, like I said, he was a guy that started fast and has kind of regressed a little bit, came back down to earth. I don't know my future plans with him, but he is locked up over the next two years. Here's Leonis Martin. He hits one down the right field line. That one does get to the wall, and Hanniger comes up throwing, and he gets it to D. Gordon. But runners on second and third here with one out as Leonis Martin has his 15th double of the year. Tim Beckham up. He gets a hanger right over the middle, and he just hits a chopper back to Edwards on the mound. And, man, he missed one on that one. And that brings up Garrett Stubbs, who already has an RBI single in this game, two for three. He gets a hanger as well, and he won't miss this one. It's going to be deep to right field, and it will miss the wall in right field. It's gone. 386 feet, his third home run of the year. And there we go, Garrett Stubbs. Have yourself a day. Has not been hitting well this season at all. And now we bring in Pat Neshek towards the end of this game, who's been pitching really well at 39 years old. And that's going to bring up J.P. Crawford with two outs. And we will get the double play ball. Nice scoop at first. And we will break the 17-game losing streak. That's what I like to see. And at least we show signs of life. I do like that, you know, we're just starting to find out who we're going to keep around, like I said earlier, and that is kind of the goal in season one, figure out what we want to do, who's good on the team, who's not, who should be moved down, who shouldn't, and that's really the goal. I really love loved what I saw from a lot of these guys in that episode, especially hitting the ball. I, I liked what I saw from Stubbs because, you know, he could be trade bait. But I like the youth, that catcher that we will have with him and Corey Lee. So I'll probably keep him around. So just looking at like where we stand with the rest of the league, you can just see like we're bottom in average, bottom in pitching. We have every single position as a whole right now. With, I mean, probably a couple of guys we probably won't have to move. You know, David Bodie's probably going to stick around. So is Clint Frazier. The rest of the positions, I just don't know. I mean, there's no clear pitcher. And then Armenteros is definitely a guy I want to keep around as well. So we're sitting here at 44 and 83. I plan on probably ending season one after next episode. Maybe two more. I guess we'll have to see what happens with the September call-ups. But you can just see we're not even close to competing this year. We're still probably a couple of years away from competing. I guess we'll have to see what happens towards the end of the season as we go into the offseason what moves we make and i have been noting the guys that you guys want me to go after i will take a look at all those guys and note them in the offseason so hit subscribe hit that like button we are headed towards the end of season one so stay tuned let's get it let's go
Yeah, they filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest on...